Do you need to focus on misspellings when you're doing keyword research? My name is Stephen Pope. I'm the founder of My Amazon Guy. And in this video, I plan on answering that question by showcasing the powerful tool from Helium 10 called the Misspellinator. And so while we dive into this, uh, the, my, my belief is that spending some time on misspellings is going to help you. How do we know this? Because if you use a tool like Helium 10's Cerebro, you can find misspellings directly in the keyword phrases and they have some search volume. So that means somebody goes onto Amazon and types in a misspelling. So I'm gonna show you the end result first so you know what we're gonna head towards and this is gonna show us examples of the misspellings and then I'm gonna show you how to do this. That way you can judge whether this is worth your time or not. So inside of this, I typed in men's artisan soap and here are all the misspellings. So something with the M missing ends 100% popularity, Amazon does not autocorrect it, which means if you don't solve for ENS, you will not solve for that misspelling. Artisan is commonly mistyped artisan, like that, with an 80% popularity, but that one is autocorrected. It is an assumption that if there is an autocorrection, that the likelihood of you needing to spend some keyword space on it is less but not necessarily guaranteed because as I've tested thousands of times, an exact match always beats a phrase match when it comes to SEO and PPC research. That is specifically on effectiveness to gain traffic. That doesn't mean most cost effective, that doesn't mean most guaranteed result, but from my experience, if you have a choice between a singular and a plural, and the plural has more search volume, I would put an exact match of the plural in the title, in the keywords, et cetera, because I firmly believe that exact match will outperform the assumptive that Amazon is capable of taking the plural and changing it to a singular and, and connecting the dots there. But a misspelling is even more so the case because there's not as much guarantee that Amazon, without an autocorrect especially, will connect the dots. So that's why I believe it's worth spending time using a misspellinator tool inside of Helium 10 to gander this. So first of all, how do you get to the spot? So inside of tools here, you can see misspellinator. Now we have a blue star next to the tools that we frequently use. So these are all of our favorites here, Cerebro, Frankenstein, and Keyword Tracker, probably my go-to um, top two tools, Cerebro and Frankenstein. Keyword Tracker, I probably check maybe once a week, once a month, somewhere in that range. And then the rest of these, very limited. Um, but Misspellinator is one that I'm starting to pay attention to based on us trying to get some incremental indexing. I'd say it's on the more advanced side of things. Maybe you do it in your like phase zero, like starting point to figure out like what keywords to pay attention to. I could see that, but you're not gonna put a misspelling in the title. You might put it in the alt text of a listing. So for example, if we go over to one of my listings right here, uh, I have an alt Chrome text called image alt text viewer and you can click it on and off. And then if we scroll down to brand story, A plus content, you can see each of these photos, every single one of these photos has alt text behind it. And you can put a misspelling in here very easily without constraints. So I highly recommend taking advantage of putting um, alt text misspellings together. And again, that Chrome extension tool, image alt text viewer. Uh, so very viable. Don't forget to do that inside of your um, brand story images as well very advantageous to set these because look, that's 96 times 100 characters of alt text that you can fill in extra, extra keyword juice. So highly recommend it. All right, so here's how I started to figure out which misspellings to pay attention to. I go over to Cerebro, I put in an ASIN and it puts up the results like this. So I've got 5,000 organic keywords to play with here. I look at the word frequency chart on the right and so if we were trying to figure out which words we should spend the most time on, it's gonna be these higher frequency words on a mature listing. So soap, men, body, women, gift, bath, set, in that order. So if we're looking at uh, a subset of those keywords, we could filter for just soap and just pay attention to soap keywords uh, by clicking on that. And then now we're down to 2,900 keywords. Uh, and then if we wanted to go down even further, we could click on men and look at 300 set keywords, right? And, and go from there. So that's why I like to use those filters. Uh, it can be super helpful to, to use that. Now, 
Um, I did try a couple of different angles to see like what would be the best way to figure out misspellings in bulk. So one of the ways I did that was I exported to a CSV file and that pulls up a list that looks like this. And that's all 5,000 of your keywords exported right there in an Excel file. I then took those and I pasted them in here and I'll, I'll kind of demonstrate what happened. So this is why I don't think this is the best way to do it. Um, sometimes it's good to show what not to do so you don't waste your time on it. But then you can see like there's 1300 unique phrases and if we hit select all, like the, the tool freezes, like it exceeds the 50 keyword limit. So you don't need to do this in a bulk fashion. So instead of that, what I would recommend doing is taking these word frequencies and you can actually export word frequencies as a CSC file just like this. And then we're gonna open that up and that's gonna give us a much smaller subset to work with. And I'll pull that Excel sheet over. And now we're only dealing with 260 of these. And then we'll just take the top 50 of them like that. And then we're gonna go over here back to misspellinator and hit process again. And now select all, find misspellings. We got 49 of these. Now, it, this is one of the tools that does take some time to process here. So you'll see it's deploying. Um, which is why I already had a, an example pre-built just to show like three keywords. And in here you can see SOPA because people mistype uh, that, that word or artisan, 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 like a lot of people mess that one up. So inside of the alt text of one of these photos, you better believe I'm going to put all of the misspellings of artisan soap so I can take advantage of that. Think about it. If I'm the only listing on the entire Amazon platform that has an exact match for artisanal, and somebody makes that typo and types it into Amazon, what are the chances of my product coming up first if nobody else on the entire platform has used that misspelling in any of their keyword juice? Super high. It's going to be advantageous. All right, so that misspellinator has processed. Uh, and then it's gonna reload the page and show us all of the misspellings for these keywords. So uh, 49 seed keywords, total misspellings, 852. Words without results, all of the brand terms which would make sense. Moisturizing, ironically, no misspellings on that one. So this is gonna give you some fun English lessons to figure out like how people misspell everything. A um, lot of misspellings on the word men. And I don't know how much of these I would focus on or, or how to diagnose and get this list to go smaller. There's probably a lot of ways we could filter this down to kind of figure it out. Um, the, and another more simpler way would just be to do one keyword at a time and then do like one photo's alt text at a time. And that might make this an easier process. Um, so you can then export this as well over to an Excel file and run some filters. And you can see original keyword men, original keyword soap, and then you got all of these like sopa, sopa, you know, soda pop <laughs> as a misspelling. Some of these you won't use, some of them you will, like soup with double O, uh, gift, and all the ways that people misspell gift. And then you can also see the prelevance as well, right? So if you're looking at popularity on the typo, and you're just trying to figure out like how, um, which keywords to focus on, if we were to export this and only use popularities north of 30%, that is going to probably um, get us quite a bit closer to where we want to go for our for our misspelling um, results that we're interested in. So that's that's going to be an easy way to do that. So I just exported uh, that latest list. We'll pull that over, and then inside of Excel here, uh, we can then filter this by adding a filter, and then uh, we're going to do everything that's north of. So text filter. Uh, let's see, it's not going to give me, well, maybe we'll sort Z to A, uh, Z to A, maybe A to Z. So 80, I, I want it, I want it biggest to smallest on this and it's, uh, it's going all the eighties together first. <laughs> all right. So we got to get that filter, right? All right. So now I've got that filtered for most common misspellings here. And if we wanted to just do like prevalence above 20%, that's gonna give us about 50 keywords right here. And so we could look at this sage without the A, super common, high popularity, no autocorrect, definitely wanna include that one. Uh, handmade without the H, sandalwood spelled with an L-E instead of A-L. Exfoliating with an extra I-L in there. Scented without the C, pack with an E, stuff without the second F, right? And on and on and on. So we could then take these and with high certainty, we could just literally copy and paste that, 
right? We got 40 different phrases here. That's gonna be about three photos worth of alt text that we could just jam pack all the misspellings into it. And that will have an immediate impact on your success to rank for those keywords. Now, if you found a power one, like, like super powerful one, then you could take that same, uh, that same keyword and then throw it into the search term field behind the ASIN as well. So if we go over to Seller Central, go to the inventory page and grab a product. Let's do one of my soaps here. And let's let that load up and hit edit on one of my products. And then we're gonna go over to the product details section where we've got keywords and all the search terms. They do call us different things depending on which category and generic keyword of mine. And so we could, we could switch out some of these keywords with some of the misspellings, right? So if we found that there was a really powerful one, so let's go look at the text export here again. And so the word, the highest popularity ones up here. So if we wanted to take those five keywords there and just slap them in to the generic keywords right there, we could do it just like that. And then say, hey, we're gonna put that on, you know, one or two of my SKUs. Now we have coverage for those misspellings. I don't think Amazon is smart enough to get the misspellings factored in when we type in the regular word. Uh, plus, we may not even have the regular word in the search terms to begin with. So it's just a really good, easy exercise, right? So in 10 minutes, you were able to learn how to use misspellinator, how to, how to go act it, why to use it, and how to implement it all in about 10 minutes uh, to affect your SEO keywords. Now, the other thing you can do as well is go into Campaign Manager and do the same thing. You could run an exact match, create a campaign for misspellings. I do not know how well this will do for your ACoS. Sometimes it's gonna be crazy good, sometimes it's gonna be crazy bad. So you do wanna put a low budget, test this out carefully, see how it goes. We also know that misspellings are highly um, done in a broad match campaign with a regular word, but you're trying to hit the misspellings maybe with a slightly different bid uh, maybe higher bid, you may show up more often than your competitor. Then you might also rank for that keyword just because you got the sale on a misspelling. So there's all kinds of reasons why you also might want to run some some PPC on a misspelling as well. I've spent about $940,000 in the last six years on Amazon PPC directly on my Age of Sage account. So I, I've done it. I've, I've had mixed results when I use misspellings, but you've got a use case now. So Check that out. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, I've got like 40 videos using Helium 10. You can check these videos out. And if you want 20% off your first uh, few months with, with Helium 10, use the promo code as well at the top of this video. My name is Stephen Pope. I'm the founder of My Amazon Guy. Thank you for watching.